Very good evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a really important conversation to have because parents, students, teachers, administrators across the country are extremely nervous about the decision or the lack of decision by our government right now on the matter of 12 standard examinations. Now, uh, this is where we are. Let me give you a quick update on what is going on. Uh, so basically, the central government has now said that it will consider suggestions from state governments on whether or not the 12th standard board examinations for the CBSC should continue. This is what the education ministry said on Sunday. They said that most states are in favor of holding the examinations in some sort of truncated form. The CBSC has presented state governments with two options. One, that the exams start on the 1st of August and be conducted in 19 subjects and the assessment for minor subjects be done on the basis of performance. The second option is that the exam be conducted in two phases, from uh, July 15th to August 1st, and then from August 5th to August 26th. And in the states where the COVID situation is under control, they can opt for window number one. And if the COVID situation is really bad, they can then opt for window number two. To give you an update of what the state governments have decided so far, states like Maharashtra have opted, have said they prefer, Maharashtra prefers the non-examination rule. It does not want to hold examinations. Delhi and Kerala have suggested vaccinating all of the students in, uh, in standard 12 before the exams. West Bengal has not made a decision. And so really it's piecemeal and extremely confusing. Now, here's the problem. Obviously, Education Minister Ramesh Borigal was tweeting uh, that the safety and security of students and teachers are extremely important. He said his ministry has sought detailed suggestions from state governments and would take an informed and collaborative decision. Goa Chief Minister Prabhat Sawant has said the decision will be taken later. Tamil Nadu government has said, uh, has proposed conducting the examinations uh, after the situation of COVID improves. Karnataka, uh, Education Minister Suresh Kumar has said it's important to conduct class 12 examinations in the interest of the students. Now, let me tell you frankly what this is doing to students. It's leaving them in a limbo, studying for months on end for an examination that they don't know is ever going to materialize. So there are two sides of this argument. On one hand, is there a way around actual examinations? Because students will need these, uh, you know, will need these answer, these mark sheets for admissions to colleges overseas, admissions to colleges in India and to other courses. But having said that, will this also put teachers and students and parents and administrators in terrible risk at a time when we shouldn't be taking that risk? That's the massive debate at this point. And the government's inability to make a decision is not helping anyone. Joining me this evening to talk about what needs to be done Dr. Samir Dalvai, who is a consultant development pediatrician at uh, PD Hindujah Hospital in Mumbai, joins us right now. Uh, Dr. Dalvai is also a member of the NCP. Mr. Uh, Gurumurthy Kasinathan, who is the founder and director of IT for Change, works uh, specifically in the education domain. And uh, Dr. Arunab Singh, who is the director principal of Nehru Works, joins us as well. Thank you for joining. Um, but an active job there. Uh, let me start with Dr. Dalvai. Dr. Dalvai, good evening. Do you believe these examinations should be held at this time? Good evening. I think, Faye, we must understand the fact that right now, India is still in the middle of its second wave. I, we have it from none other than Dr. Fauci, that he said that we are head of the third year, not the second wave. And he very clearly said, just 48 hours back, that we are still in the middle of our second wave. And needless to say, we don't need him. If you see the numbers across the country, yes, fortunately, they seem to be slowing down. But there's no uh, way to say that we are out of this. And please understand when we are talking about students, it's not only the immediate sickness in the hospital, that's what the doctors are looking at, but it's also their mental state of preparation. There's been mayhem across the country, which has been unprecedented in the lives of many of us who are much older than the students, of course. You can imagine only what these tender minds are going through. They've been through this lockdown and uncertainty for more than a year as developmental pediatrician, psychologist, psychiatrist, we are talking about the psychosocial impact on the minds of children. We're talking in terms of acute anxiety and also looking at the possibility of post-traumatic stress disorder. And in the middle of all this, what's worsening the situation is not having a clarity on whether they have exams or no, 
because as we all have gone through it, we know in the 10th and more importantly, the 12th is what we think decides our future academically or professionally. Of course, much later we realize that the degree doesn't count for much in terms of success and happiness in life. But that's exactly what 12th uh, grade students do think. And to keep them undecided is the worst crime that we can probably do. As it is, children at this age, adolescents are missing out on the best part of their life, unlike the rest of us on this panel. Because this is the age where the world and their friends and the school and society matters more to them. All of us will agree that our best friendships till today have begun in our adolescence in that age when we met people today who are our best friends. They're missing all that, but worse, not to know what the future has in store for them, not knowing when is the exam, what kind of exam, is it going to be a multiple choice question, is it going to be a subjective objective, when will it be, will it be truncated, will it be prolonged, I think it's playing havoc on the minds of the children and this is a parallel pandemic that we are looking at. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my dog was barking. Uh, Dr. Dalvai, there's also a question of uh, young people who have lost loved ones in their households, whose parents might be COVID positive, whose parents might be in hospital, whose grandparents might be in hospital right now. They're dealing with a lot of, as we all are, upheaval of on the domestic side to expect them within all of that to continue to focus on these, these, these sort of unending examinations. What sort of trauma does that result? Uh, I didn't even want to get into that, but I'm glad you brought it up uh, because we've been seeing children now who are coming to us for grief counseling and bereavement because I've had these two patients who the, the uncle called me up saying that this child lost his father a six-year-old boy and we don't know how to even break the news to him because we are so afraid of, break, of giving any bad news to our children these days. And then there was a younger child, three and a half year old boy and the father had just passed away and the mother was, you know, actually a consultation, so to speak, as to how to break this news. So children have actually in the first wave perhaps lost a grandparent, but now in the second wave, they've lost a parent, sometimes both the parents or the other parent is still seriously ill. Children themselves have fallen ill somebody near close and dear one has passed away and it's playing a tremendous havoc on their mind imagine having to focus on exams parallelly while this is happening and let's understand one thing it's not that these things never happen in somebody's life but you always have somebody else to turn to you have that teacher you have that uncle you have that friend who offers you solace unfortunately now everybody's in the same position so this is something we have to really worry about a crisis developing a second or a parallel pandemic of mental health crisis within our children. And hence, it is very important. Many of them feel that they haven't been able to focus on. I mean, I work with a lot of children with ADHD, for example, and they feel they just haven't been able to focus on the online uh, schooling, even if they haven't had an uh, unfortunate incident at home. So none of them are really in the best frame of mind to appear for this exam. Well, uh, let me bring in our other two guests as well. Uh, Dr. Singh, what is, and, and I know that, you know, schools tend to talk to each other because a lot of the burden of organizing this, if it does happen, will be on the schools. What is the point of view of most of the school administrators at this point? The school administrators um, are divided. Um, they're divided uh, based on what the circumstance of their school has been. If they've been able to run classes, have kids in their online classes, they feel if the exams happen, their kids will do well. Administrators who've not had that luxury are afraid that if exams happen, their, their results would plummet. And, uh, and, and, and I feel in these conversations, a lot of time, we are looking out for our very own. Or maybe this is a time when we need to empathize with the, with, with the scenario as a, as a whole country and, and then look at that. Um, our kids have been fortunate in, in big cities where they had access to IT, where they had access to online devices and they could uh, plug into their teachers and teachers reached out and did sessions with kids. But that is not India. This is, this is a, a very small microcosm of uh, the, the entire ecosystem that we have. Uh, so school leaders are divided. Um, but I, if, if I get a vote on this, I would currently vote for no exams. Uh, this is not the time when you put these kids through one more trauma. And for people who would say that they would be able to maintain um, physical distancing outside exam centers, 
you might be able to maintain it inside the exam center in that examination hall. But as 1,000 kids uh, stand to give their first exam with 2,000 parents, 3,000 people in, in front of a school, there is no way that there is any social distancing happening. Unless, of course, in Kumbh, social distancing was followed, in which case exams can happen at any time. Right. Um, Mr. Gurbhati, same question to you at this point. Um, we have to, at the end of the day, be honest about the fact as a country that children are being impacted, children are being hospitalized, the children are testing COVID positive. We have experts who have told us this is largely happening because our homes in India are too small to actually successfully be able to isolate children from their parents or from other adults who have tested positive. Is it wise at all? to have these examinations right now? I agree with Arunab completely that uh, it's exactly the wrong time to have something like a mass examination. And I will just step one, take one step back and say, what is the purpose of this examination? I think we should really ask that question first. An examination is, like, is a diagnostic. So you want to know whether you're doing well, your health is okay or not. But that is not the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to be healthy, to be to eat nutritious food and to go about one's life. And that's teaching learning. So teaching learning is important. And the examination is just a point in time figuring out, are you okay in your learning processes? But in India, they say that assessment is a tail that wags the dog. So that's a tail, but the whole system functions just for the sake of the examination. And the 12th examination is important because that's what decides whether you're going to go to IIT and make it big in life. And like uh, Samir said, obviously, we know at our age that there is no real connection between what you did in 12th and how well are you going to do in life in terms of not only wealth, but actual happiness. But our whole education system is predicated on the fact that you do well in 12th and it's a it's a huge filtering system. So it, it's, it, it's like a refinery, you know, aviation fuel gets out on the top, then you have fuel for the vehicles and you have kerosene in the bottom. So that's the purpose of 12th examination. But if you look at learning that's in this year, the learning has not happened at all. And Arunab is very right. We are talking about metros like Delhi or Bombay or Bang even Bangalore. We do online classes and we know 80% of the children don't have an ability to get onto it. Even college students. When there is no food you are given in terms of nutrition the whole year, and you say, I'm going to run a series of blood tests and other reports on you to see are you how, you know, how much dying you are. I think that is the state we are in. There is no education that has happened in, over the last one year. What are you going to test? There's nothing to test. I think it's traumatic for the children. I have twin daughters. They have been doing online education over the last one year. They're lucky. They've had online education, but they're stressed because their classmates, classmates have died of COVID, classmates' parents have died of COVID. And very important thing to remember in the second wave, younger people are also dying. And what medical professionals tell us is you may not die, but the long-term impact in terms of lung damage, liver damage, we are even we're even figuring it out now. So given all this, it's a absolutely no reason to put children through that kind of a risk in terms of their health, stress mm -hmm. them out mentally and create huge damage. I agree with Dr. Samir okay. Zalwai, there's a second pandemic, let's avoid it. So actually, so let me then look at the other side of the argument, right? The argument that how will they apply to colleges without examination results? How will they move forward to whatever their choices are going forward? Um, so... It's a really, it's, it's really a complicated situation. I want to take this back to Dr. Singh. Is there a solution one can offer to the decision makers on uh, how to solve, how to tackle this problem? It indeed is a very, very difficult uh, situation that the policymakers are finding themselves in. We should also not forget that in India, education is a subject of the concurrent list. So the, the center has uh, some guidelines to give, but eventually it has to look at different states and, and uh, getting all the states in the current uh, political storm that the country is in would, would perhaps be a difficult situation to find themselves in. So I don't want to be in the policymaker's chair if there is an opportunity today. Uh, but I would, I would put my vote on don't put students through an examination system in varied circumstances. Instead, come up with uh, a way that you've come up with the grade 10 exams where some internals, how the school has done better, uh, you know, in the last three years. And, and it's a complicated formula. And like I said earlier, there is not going to be one solution that will work for everybody out there. There has to be uh, a middle path. And, and perhaps even giving an opportunity to students to rewrite this exam at a later date when the 
when the situation permits would be would be my guess best guess but to take this exam online currently is not my answer Uh, there is also this thing that they're suggesting that instead of three hours, it'll be for ninety minutes. I'm thinking, hello, how is that any different? <laughs> What have you changed in the logistics uh, in ninety minutes that uh, it's not going to happen in one hundred and eighty? So, so my my vote is no exam right now. But some universities that had always relied on board exams and never come up with uh, with their own system of admitting kids, like my alma mater, uh, would find it challenging. But Uh, if india is exporting it to the rest of the world and has five of the top 10 ceo of it companies can we not come up with a system that works for for if not everybody at least for most of us also there is um, you know dr singh there is a uh, you know a, a fallout of of a backlog right if the 12th standard students don't take their examinations in this window then you have the 11th standard that comes into the 12th standard and now you have twice as many students who need to be administered and to be completely fair i'm i'm looking at this from all angles there is no end point to covid right now we're talking about a third wave at the end of the year so it's not like in one of the options that the cbse has offered the government is to just keep pushing this further it's not like there could be any solution that way that okay let's look at it in september let's look at it in december let's look at it next year vaccination is the the only solution that unfortunately uh, our ministers are not talking about as much as they should have been talking about why is it that we are not vaccinating 16 year old onwards and then saying we will make sure that these kids are a priority and in 6 months time their education goes back on track Uh, that is a credible um, uh, option available uh, if they would want to. There are countries around the world who've gone gone that path and have vaccinated half of their 16 year olds already. So that is is perhaps has the ability to put the spanner in the COVID wheel and bring education back. Doctor Dalwai, do you agree? I couldn't agree more. He's perfect. That's perfect. Unless you have a definite way of knowing that a large by far a large majority of subjects are uh, by subjects i don't mean the academic subjects i mean people are safe you can't think of a mass exercise with them and he's perfectly right you need to have vaccination and we seem to have missed the bus even for this uh, young generation because unless you have vaccinations you cannot think of it let me also at this point say that unicef has actually come out with a paper which says that covid does not spread within schools it spreads within homes i mean there's actually a paper out by unicef which says that but they have many provisos there they have some kind of a ventilation system and this and that mm-hmm. having said that i don't think in a country as diverse as india again somebody mentioned that in a particular setting of a very remote or uh, like 0.1% of the population they may be able to afford that but the by large the masses won't and the only answer is going to be vaccination 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 Uh, Mr. Guru Murthy, the question that comes back to us every time is, and and I know that dealing with education, you've actually tackled this many times. This whole burden of hinging one's entire life on one examination, um, and and what that does to students in our country, is this an opportunity for India to relook at that entire system and find an alternative to hinging our entire futures? to one 12th standard examination yeah fair you made a very important point this 12th exam for everybody is the big thing in life you know you either make it or your life is gone and we must remember that a microscopic minority makes it to the iits and the higher institution so for the purpose of that 1% of the student population who wants to make it big 80% of the students are told their failure so i think the current system is completely bad in fact i am reminded of europe you know western europe where at the time at the time when you have to make an admission into higher education you can choose what you want so it's not that you are a great student so you get medicine you are not good so you get into commerce it's not like that you like commerce you study commerce we need to go for that system but that is unfortunately not a point in time uh, solution mm-hmm. because we all know that that requires significant investment in higher education it can be done it's not that the numbers are more china has got people in higher education they don't have this kind of a crazy system to the extent that we have i think you are absolutely right it's a point in time for us to say can we reform the system so that we are not we are failing our children year after year the 12 should not be what it is today 
but that really requires huge investments in higher education, which is a way to go. What else do we want to spend money on other than to educate yeah. our children? And just last point, I want to agree very much with the two pan other panelists who said that the most important thing is vaccinating. The cost of a life is 300 rupees or 150 rupees. And it's a shame that we are not even being able to make that choice. It's a no-brainer. You have to vaccinate all your children. You have to vaccinate all your teachers. The Karnataka minister wrote to the health minister of India six months back and said, can we treat teachers as frontline workers? You are sending them on testing and tracing duties, but they're not frontline for vaccinating. And I think it's we are treating our best people very badly. And I think it's a moment of time to reflect not only on the state of education, but also on wealth being not what it is today and the way we look at our teachers and education itself. Yeah. So there are several problems right now. One is not just, um, you know, you said that vaccines cost this much to buy, but the problem is that there are no vaccines. The, the, a lot of senior citizens have not got their second dose right now. A lot of people in the 45 plus age group category have not got their second dose. 18 to 44 has not even got its first dose. It's probably what is holding the government back in announcing vaccinations for a younger age group. But to come back to your point of, you know, making examinations the be all and end all. And it's so important for our audience to understand that the reason why education is so competitive in our country is because we don't have enough yeah. institutions. Yeah. We don't have enough proper good schools. The education given by the public sector government schools, nobody wants. Everybody then wants the better option, which is to put their kids in a private school, which then leads to all of that, uh, you know, competitiveness. The same thing happens also for higher education. We just don't have enough medical colleges, enough engineering colleges, enough regular colleges to study commerce and to study science. That is why everyone is putting so much pressure on their children. So it comes back, you know, and, and this is interesting. Uh, this was mentioned by the National Education Policy of 2020 as well. But the government nicely said that we should move towards a, a space where we're not hinging everything on examinations. But we haven't seen too much of that being implemented or even discussed, Mr. Singh, Dr. Singh, I'm sorry. Uh, I agree with you. And you talked about uh, private schools and government schools. And I, I often say there is a dichotomy there. You go to a fee-paying private school, which improves your chances of going to a subsidized central government or a state government college. But if you're going to a government school, you now need to pay for expensive private education in, in, in the degree format. So the dichotomy has existed uh, since a long time. But going back to your question on, uh, on an assessment system that is not hinged on one particular exam, the national education policy talks about it in several pages where it says that the uh, assessment system should be a 360 degrees approach and even goes on to say that even what the parents are feeling about the child should be documented in the 360 degree portfolio of sorts uh, that you're making for the child, which the colleges would be able to use. Uh, something uh, very similar to what is happening in the US currently as well, where, where they're going away from their standard assessments and uh, more on, on a profile based scenario. But let us not forget that this is exactly what we had attempted in the CCE, that's a continuous and comprehensive evaluation which we binned some five, six, or maybe more years back, this is exactly what that format was talking about, that you do an anecdotal evidence gathering of this child over period and, uh, and slim down the chances of the child not succeeding because he was unwell on a particular exam, or maybe that exam theory wasn't the skill set that the child was, was good at. So in theory, the new education policy talks about it, as a member of the standard setting committee on NEP, we have tried to incorporate that into the standards that schools would need to, uh, uh, to uh, be uh, uh, fulfilling. But let us still not forget the spectrum of schools that you're dealing with in this country. And it's easier for us to speak uh, in the language that we're speaking in from our uh, drawing rooms or our libraries uh, and say, this is possible next year if there is intent and if there is money riding behind it, it's perhaps possible over the next decade. But I, I suspect that if either of those two are available for education in our country. Uh, Dr. Dalvai, you wanted to come in on that point of uh, where our education stands right now? Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad you touched that point because Dr. Singh brought it up very well when he said that 12th, and as you mentioned, is the fulcrum of uh, the educational success of a student. I would like to disagree a little bit. If you see the stress outside 
a montes junior kg or a senior kg or a class one or a class two uh, classroom of an examination day and if you see the stress on the parents waiting outside it may not be much different from what it is in class 12 and i'm not kidding you and we must understand that in education in this country the most influential stakeholder the most influential stakeholder is not the government or the education system it's the parent because let's understand that a huge chunk of our education system is privately paid and hence this entire culture towards examinations is not driven as much by the schools as much by the parents and hence i would beg to say that 12th is not the final ritual in this entire wheel of examinations either if you see you have more suicides in the post 12th professional colleges so the stress doesn't go away from junior kg to passing out your iit and that is because parents feel or the society feels that success and happiness in life a good comes from a good job and a good job or a good career comes from a good education and that's why you will have women who do domestic housework wo mumbai mein hum bolte hai ghar mein kaam ghar kaam karne wali bhai the biggest import the most important priority in her life is to save money and send her child to an english school and to good to tuitions because she feels my life is gone but mere bacche ka life tab banega jab wo education payega so in our country with this huge disparity education is seen as the final equalizer which is why everybody is so focused about it so unless we change this entire paradigm around success like we mentioned may not be today we don't think it is because the marks we got in 12th unless we change this paradigm about success in life with parents i don't think this is really going to change right i'm going to leave it here but gentlemen thank you so much for joining us of course we will take this up again when the central government gives us some decision in the meantime and appeal to the central government to consider the voices that are coming out for people who who understand the education sector well especially who understand the fact that our children are being put through a really unprecedented amount of pressure at this point they're losing loved ones their friends are losing loved ones people in their homes are unwell they all of our homes are right now domestically um, shuffled up and not normal at this point the last thing we should be putting pressure on our children about is examinations it's almost ridiculous that the government is taking this long to make this decision find the solution it is your job to do so and please do so immediately thank you for watching for our viewers of course our 9 pm news will be up at 9 pm where we give you all of the information of the day without any sort of opinion any shouting or any noise you can catch that uh, 9 pm bulletin as well and share it with your friends and family thanks for watching